Atif, thanks so much for joining us. I know that you're very much on the front lines of fighting the COVID-19 pandemic. What's it like right now in Boston at the hospital there? You know, it is a really strange, uh, scary, and I think surreal. It just feels, everything feels so different. Every day, uh, our hospital keeps on filling up with patients. Uh, every day, we, we get the numbers, and we're just hoping for that corner to turn in terms of actually seeing a decrease in the number of patients coming into the hospital. But it just seems to be this pot that new patients keep on coming in, and we're worried about it overflowing so far. We've been lucky that we've had enough ICU beds and we've had enough ventilators and we've had enough hospital beds so we don't have, we can offer everyone the care that we want. Our concern obviously is if we'll get to the point where we run out of resources, but luckily we have not and we're, our fingers and toes are crossed that we can turn that corner um, uh, and avoid that place. And what is your role, Ativ, when it comes to taking care of patients? What are you doing? So I'm what's called a hospitalist. So I take care of hospitalized patients. And so typically outside of this pandemic, I would, anybody who would be admitted to the hospital with heart failure, renal failure, their pneumonia, I'll be the doctor taking care of them. And I work at a teaching hospital. So I work with residents and medical students. I have now become a COVID specialist because it has become a strange world that except for one patient I had in the last week, every single one of them had COVID. Um, and so that's primarily what I'm treating. I'm treating patients both on the front end who are coming into the hospital quite sick, but don't require the level of an ICU. And I'm also uh, caring for a lot of patients, unfortunately, who are dying and we uh, are not moving forward with their care. So I've had a number of deaths in the last week. And then the lastly, I'm having the great cases, which are patients who are coming out of the ICU after several weeks being intubated. And we're helping them with that end phase of trying to get them out of the hospital, well, improving and getting them out of the hospital. So it's a, I'm a COVID specialist now. Yeah, I think everyone is becoming a COVID specialist. How do you handle that personally? Because this is really, this is a very difficult situation. You have a family as well. I know we've, we've got you there in the basement. Um, to stay away from your family right now. T tell us about what the toll this is taking on doctors. Yeah, and I think, you know, on one level, it's just you're doing your job, right? So you're do go showing up and you're doing what you normally do and taking care of patients. So from that end, and if you just focus on your job, you just do what you normally do. On the other hand, if you take a step back, you recognize how strange a time we're living in right now. One, just how different the work environment is. It's very strange in the sense that you have all this gear that you're putting on. You can't recognize your friends anymore because they're all, you know, you'll walk past someone you've known for years and you just can't recognize them. It's so strange. And also just um, there's this palpable kind of nervousness or fear that people have because they're afraid that they will become ill. And then obviously, and most importantly, is the patient side. You see both the patients who, um, old, young and old, who are struggling with this horrible illness. You see them isolated in their hospital room. So you are often the, one of the only people that they're gonna see physically in a day or several days because no one can see them, no one can come in. The hospital is this kind of weird, usually we have visitors and family, we don't have any of that. And also we're trying to get in and out of the hot room so quickly because we don't want to become infected also. And so it, you, you feel very much for the patients who are both struggling physically, but also emotionally because they're so isolated. 